In this video, we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. The first quadratic equation we're going to solve by factoring um, does, has a 1 for a coefficient for the x squared term. This is the easier of the two um, methods for factoring quadratics. If there is a coefficient for there, there will be a second video that shows us how to do that. And to remember, to solve any equation is you're trying to find its x-intercepts or its roots. So the solutions, the x-intercepts of the graph of the equation or the roots of the equation all mean the same thing. So to, um, I'm going to show you where the method comes from that we're going to use to solve these. And then I'm going to work through some examples on solving these. So first thing I want to remind you of is the zero product property. Okay, and in the case for solving equations for the zero product property, if I have an equation where I have two expressions that are equal to zero, A and B are an expression, for example, x plus 5 times x minus 2. That's an expression, and that's an expression being multiplied together. The only way to get 0 with the multiplication is if a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. And we're going to use that fact to solve our quadratics. So I would set the first expression equal to 0 and solve, subtract 5 from both sides, and then set the second expression equal to 0, add 2 to both sides. So the solutions to this expression right here would be x equals negative 5 or x equals 2. So that's how the zero product property is going to come into play. Our goal is to turn something that looks like this, x squared plus bx plus c, into something that looks like two binomials multiplied together. So where does that come from? Well, let me just write two generic um, polynomials, uh, binomials. So I'm going to do x, I'm just going to call it p, and x plus q. And we're going to say that that is uh, going to be the equation that I start with. Well, we learned in previous lectures how to multiply these two things together. Well, we're going to do the first term, which is going to be x times x, which is x squared. Then the outer terms, which is x times q. So I'm going to write it qx. Inner terms, p times x, so I'll write px. And then the last terms, p times q. And we learned how to factor by grouping. Well, I'm going to group these middle two terms. And notice I have an x in common in the middle two terms. So I have x squared plus q plus px plus pq. So I have an x squared plus something times x plus something. x squared plus something times x plus something. So let's see where these things come from. Well, that middle term, b, are these two numbers added together. And the last term, c, are these two numbers multiplied together. And we're going to use that fact to take something that's in this form and work it backwards to turn it into this form. And once I have it in this form, I can set the y equal to 0, which is where the x-intercepts are going to be, and then solve. So I'm going to want to find two numbers that multiply to the last number and that add to the middle number. So that's the basics of what we're going to do to um, factor these types of quadratics. 
And then once we factor, we are going to solve them. So our first example is going to be x squared. So y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So one method that a lot of teachers show to set this up is give yourself a little diamond. And we want to find two numbers that multiply to 5 that add to 6. Okay? Well, two numbers that multiply to 5 that add to 6 are 1 and 5. Once you have these two numbers, you can then just write x and whatever this number is, plus 1, and x and whatever number that is, plus 5. Now, I do not need to see any work to go from here to the solutions. But I'm going to show you the work that's there. So if you need to show it to make sure you're getting the right thing. Because what you're going to do now is you're just going to set this equal to 0. And then we use our zero product property, set each of these equal to zero. And then solve. I'm going to subtract the 1 from both sides. Subtract the 5 from both sides. So my solutions are negative 1 and negative 5. And remember what this means for it to be a solution. Those are its x-intercepts. So I'd have an x-intercept at negative 1 and at negative 5. And in some classes, I've already shown you how to graph quadratics. Some classes, I haven't shown you how to graph quadratics. But one of the methods that we're going to use to graph quadratics, if it's in this form, is to plot the intercepts and some other key values. But I'm just going to stop there and show you that these two numbers are its x-intercepts. So how can you come up with these two numbers? Well, if x plus 1 is a factor, negative 1 is a 0. So if there is no number in front of the x, your zeros are just going to be the opposite of whatever's inside of the parentheses. So the opposite of that is negative 1. The opposite of 5 is negative 5. Okay, another example. x squared plus 15x plus 56. So this is why it's really important for you to really know what your multiplication tables are for a middle school, an elementary school. Because if you know what numbers multiply to give you 56, then you can come back and figure out what combinations of those things are going to be able to give you the 15. Well, I remember my multiplication tables um, from school. And the only number on my multiplication tables that gave me 56 directly we're 7 times 8. So what I'm going to do is I need two numbers that multiply to 56, that add to 15, and I'm going to try 7 and 8. Well, 7 plus 8 is indeed 15. So factored form, x plus 7 times x plus 8. My answers, the opposite of that number and the opposite of that number. So the solutions there would be negative 7 and negative 8. So here's something I want to show you. If the last number is positive, both of these numbers have to have the same sign. If the last number is negative, these have to have opposite signs. If, these, if it's positive, the signs it's going to have is whatever the sign of the middle number is. And if it's negative, the sign of the middle number is going to be the sign of whichever number has the biggest absolute value. And the next three examples that I work through are going to show us these various combinations. So next is xy equals x squared plus 3x minus 40. 
I need two numbers that multiply to negative 40 that add to a positive 3. So the way I look at this is I know they have to have opposite signs. One of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative. The biggest one is going to be positive. So I'll put the biggest one here and the smallest one there. Now I need to look at what my multiples of 40 were. Well, if you don't remember all the multiples of 40, let's just write them down. Let's come up with our factor pairs. So we have 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 5 and 8, um, 4 and 10, and that should be it for my factors of 40. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the big one minus the small one. 40 minus 1 is 39. 20 minus 2 is 18. 8 minus 5 is 3. So 8 minus 5 is 3. So this is why in Algebra 1 in eighth grade and in 8th grade math, I make sure that you guys can come up with factor pairs. So that way you can use this. Now, you do enough of these things, and they, these should become recognition. Okay? I call this factoring by inspection, which means you look at it and you write down the answer. Okay? You do, don't need to do this work necessarily. This is just a tool that may help some students out. I don't need to see this work. But again, that's a tool that may help some of you out. So my answer here is y equals x, and whatever number that is, negative 5, times x plus 8. So my x is equal to the opposite of negative 5, which is 5, or x is equal to the opposite of 8, which is negative 8. Next example. is x squared minus 9x minus 18. So I need two numbers that multiply to actually that's going to be a positive 18. I need two numbers that multiply to a positive Ugh, no, that's right. I was right. Negative 18. Uh, negative 18 that add to a negative 9. Okay? So I have 1 and 18. I have 2 and 9. I have 3 and 6. Yep, I was right. That one has to be a positive. Okay, so my answer is, one, they have to have the same sign. Both signs have to be negative. Multiply to 18, add to negative, uh, negative 9. They're both negative, and the only 9 combination I have here is the 3 and the 6. So I have x minus 3 times x minus 6 and I get x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 6. And my last example is y equals x squared minus 11x plus 28. I need two numbers that multiply to 28 that add to negative 11. They have the same sign, which is negative. And I'm either going to do 2 times 14 or 4 times 7. 4 times 7 is going to give me that 11. So I have x minus 4 times x minus 7. So x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 7. We'll tell you right now, not everything that is in this form is factorable. Okay, I may give you some problems that are not factorable. So if you 
are asked to solve by factoring and or just to factor a quadratic that's in this form and you can't come up with a solution which means you have to this is one of the times that you're going to write down every factor pair that you know and you're going to check it out then you're going to write not factorable um, in most cases if it's just for me to show you for practice quadratics by factoring they are going to be factorable however um, when we start dealing with higher degree polynomials we're going to break things down to where some parts are quadratics and you need to be able to see if you can factor those quadratics that are in that form.